So it's November the 1st. I'm in Kansas. I'm here for two reasons. One, we've got a giant deer on trail camera. And two, we've got the red moon coming up. You know, this next week is probably gonna be as good as it gets. And this spot that I'm in, I'm really familiar with. This is where I've been hunting in Kansas for the last four or five years. I've killed a couple really good bucks on this farm. Great observation spot for early November. It's a warm morning, but we got the extinguisher out first thing. Did a couple grunts and we just had a little eight point come through. It's really warm. Had a big buck show up on camera here. Big deer. 200 plus. He's only been on camera once though, so we got some work to do. The thing I love about this farm is doing a little bit of calling I know that pretty much any deer on this 80 acres is going to hear me and I'm set up in, this, in a situation in this tree where I can see just about everything. So once this small eight point moves off it's time to start doing a little bit of rattling and I'm just really letting any big buck in the area know that you know there's some bucks in the area um, you know getting a little antsy getting a little fired up and just kind of feeling each other out not getting real aggressive with the calling yet but just letting a good one know if he's close by that something's going on up here. about halfway through my sequence and I look up and all I can see is rack coming up out of the creek. You know, at first glance I can tell this deer's got an enormous body and it's got a giant clean eight point rack. Definitely not the buck that I'm after. This is a heck of a deer. I definitely would like to get a closer look. <laughs> When you've got a big mature buck that's in the mood and he's ready to fight and he's showing that he's a dominant animal, you want to bring him in that last little bit, you know, into bow range. I think the snort wheeze is just, it's just the icing on the cake. You know, when you catch a buck in that mind frame and he might be, you know, on the fence whether he's going to come or not, seems like nine times out of ten just a snort wheeze right on top of everything else is enough just to close a deal on a big mature buck like this. And it's really just a matter of just blowing some, forcing some air in between, in between your teeth, just a shh, 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 and it seems like that's really all it takes. You know, right off the bat, I can tell that this buck is probably ruling the roost on this farm. You know, the way he's acting with his body size and the way he's marching up this hill, he's coming up here to, uh, kick somebody's butt and let him know that this is his block. I end up calling this buck into 30 yards and you know, nine times out of 10, this buck would be in trouble. But you know, I've got pictures of a 200 plus inch non-typical in the area. I'm not about to drop the hammer on this deer, but it's man, like I say, any other time he might be in trouble. It's an incredible, incredible eight point. So here's just an incredible, you know, specimen of a whitetail. Probably 300 pound animal, 160 you know, inch eight point frame. I mean, this is a stud of a buck, but you know, I'm here chasing a 200 inch plus buck and I've got one on camera in this area. So the last thing I'm gonna do is fill my tag, even on an incredible buck like this. I mean, I'm here for one thing. It's first day of my hunt. Any other time, maybe, but not this week. 
You know, there was a few keys to this hunt this morning, which in my book was a successful hunt. You know, I'm here because of the moon. You know, the red moon's coming up, the rut's coming up. You know, we're, we've got the perfect storm coming here in the next 10 days for deer activity during daylight. And you know, I, this is a farm I'm familiar with. I know I'm in the best spot on this farm to, to observe and to watch what's going on and to do a little calling. And you know, with the extinguisher and the black rack, I know that every deer on this farm heard me this morning and I've probably got to look at the best buck in the area. So it was really a successful morning. Um, accomplished my goal this morning of what I wanted to do, but now it's time to get down and do some scouting for the buck that we're here after. So it's November 4th and the red moon's coming up strong. You know, I've got a, I've got a five day, six day window here with the red moon to where that moon is hitting at prime time when these deer want to be moving anyway. You know, when you get that red moon a few hours before dark till maybe an hour, hour and a half, two hours after sunset, that's really about as good as it gets. And that's why I'm here this week. You know, this is an evening hunt. I'm on the farm where I've gotten pictures of this giant non-typical now. This buck was in here the end of October 24th, the 31st, and then the 1st of November. So, you know, he's been on this farm within the past week. And these bucks, they're not locked up yet, but they're probably, you know, running their circuits, checking each family group of does to see if anything's getting ready to come into heat. So the plan is to wait until about sunset. I've got the DSD decoy out in front of me. If I see anything at all, start uh, doing a little rattling with the black rack or the extinguisher to bring them into this decoy and see if we can't get a look at this big non-typical. He gets out of sight, that's my opportunity to get the black rack out, do a little rattling, see if we can't get him drawn in. And sure enough, after I get done with my sequence, he's circled all the way around me coming in from the downwind side. So this buck pops up in the back corner of this field and he's probably 80 or 90 yards from me. And I know that this buck can't see the decoy from where he's at. So I give him a snort wheeze to let him know I'm up here. He's still feeding, not convinced. Give him one more. And he's coming. I know the instant this buck has seen my decoy, his ears go straight back, he starts getting bristled up, and I know this buck is committed now to the decoy. It's really hard to beat the excitement, you know, when you get a big mature buck responding to the calls and coming into a decoy. Just the whole visual of, of watching one, you know, with his ears laid back and his hair getting all bristled up and the posturing and the way they come in sideways to a, to a decoy, it's just, there's nothing like it in the whitetail woods. You know, the, the thing about a snort wheeze, you rarely ever hear two of them the same. You know, and this buck is snort wheezed twice, and they both sounded completely different. It was kind of like the first half of a snort wheeze, and, and then the second half a little bit later. Very rarely ever hear the exact same call each time, you know, from, a, from an animal. But, you know, it's just a couple examples of, you know, uh, of what you can try when it comes to snort wheeze and trying to call a big buck in. So I can tell right away that this isn't a big, mature animal. I mean, he's three, four years old, definitely not in his prime antler-wise. Um, 
you know, when he's all bristled up, he looks like he's got an enormous body, but you know, you can tell this buck is still a year or two away from being, you know, what he can potentially be. So um, as neat as it is watching this buck respond to the decoy, and it's still quite a trophy, you know, with that big hook coming off his base, he's still not what we're here for. Great encounter, hard to beat the excitement of a big deer coming into the decoy. You know, so we've picked up a couple things here, you know, just by the way that this buck is acting around this decoy. And one, you know, he didn't charge right in and smash this decoy. So, you know, it really gives me an idea of where these deer are at according to the rut. You know, we're still a little early. And another thing, you know, this buck didn't come in and smash this decoy. is also making me think that this is probably not the most dominant buck in this area. So good to know and it just goes to show you how effective calling can be this time of the year you know when um, you see an animal out there that's out of bow range get their attention bring them in so they're you know they're hearing deer you know they've got the visual right here with a decoy and it's just really a, a great combination to put it all together and to bring a good buck into bow range and this might be the ticket if uh, we can get a look at this big non-typical because he might come right into the decoy So it's November the 5th. You know, these next two nights are as good as it gets for an evening hunt in November because of this red moon. It's overhead, it's hitting right before dark, and this is probably the best chance of catching a big buck moving during daylight these next two nights. You know, in this spot, you couldn't design a better rut spot than what I found over here. You know, we've got two major fence lines intersecting in this in this corner. I've got a creek bed that's cutting through here diagonally, and there's virtually, you know, six, seven different travel corridors all coming together right in this low spot. You couldn't design a better spot for early November than what I've got right here. Red moon. First red moon of November. This is as good as it gets for an evening hunt. We've got a really big deer on this farm. Perfect win for this spot tonight, though. I got down in this creek and walked it about 300 yards to get into the stand perfectly quiet. What a beautiful evening. We'll see what happens. So obviously I'm set up here tonight hoping to self-film, you know, shooting this 200 inch deer that I've been hunting all week. We haven't got any pictures of this buck since um, the first, which was five or six days ago. Plan is, you know, to get in here early. The wind has switched on me. Um, it's actually blowing in a direction I think this buck could be coming from. But, you know, this stand, the way I've got it set up, I'm probably 30 foot up above this creek. And the plan is just like always to wait, you know, right about sunset before these deer are up and moving and do a little calling and try to catch a big buck in the area, you know, before he's up moving in another direction. Hopefully catch him bedded down, he hears us calling and starts heading our way right before dark. So it's early. I mean, it, we're an hour away from sunset. You know, I've got a good solid hour before I'm even gonna be thinking about cracking the antlers together and I hear something behind me in the thicket. I turn around and here's the giant non-typical coming right to my stand. This deer has really got me at a disadvantage because I'm self-filming. I've got my camera mounted on my left-hand side to film a creek crossing and he's coming in from behind me on my right. I've got to be on my A game because it is dead calm in this creek bed and this buck is literally within 20 yards of me in a matter of seconds. And it's taken everything I've got not to go ahead and shoot this deer and to try to get my camera swung all the way around my body. And all I can basically do is point it straight down. This buck is so close, I can't take a chance on making noise with anything. But I actually managed to get the camera around and get it on this giant whitetail that's literally at the base of my tree. I 
I don't know how much time has gone by, but this buck has been at the base of my tree for way too long without me releasing an arrow. But I ha he's too close, and I couldn't get a shot. Had to have to actually wait for this buck to move away from the tree and to clear some brush before I can actually, you know, get drawn on him and try to get an arrow in him. and my first shot looks perfect. Hit right where I was aiming, but this buck is acting a little strange. I'm not seeing the blood instantly from this buck. You know, he's not doing his death run. You know, I've got one arrow in this buck already, and he's still in bow range. The opportunities that a deer like this don't come around every year, and I've got a chance to hit this buck again, I'm gonna take it. I just shot my fourth 200 inch deer. Yes! That deer snuck in behind me. He was right under me for five minutes and I couldn't move, I couldn't turn the camera on. I had my hand behind my back trying to get the camera on this deer. I got two arrows in him, and he just fell in that cornfield, and that is my biggest buck ever. Yes! Okay, so I'm here in Kansas, hunting with my good buddy Chris Seymour, and my other best friend, the Red Moon. And I just shot my biggest buck ever. <laughs> I just killed my fourth 200 inch white tail. Yes. <laughs> Would you look at that? Oh my gosh. That right there is what dreams are made of. This has got to be one of the proudest moments of my life. What an absolute giant. I don't know what to say. I really don't know what to say. You know, I, I texted uh, my good buddies, Adam Kerman and Chris Seymour about 544 right after I shot this deer. And the time on the moon guide was 541. I mean, it was two, three minutes off of that red moon. And um, I've been following it for 20 years and every year. And what I see and what I shoot just reinforces that natural pull, that instinct, whatever you want to call it, that um, drives these mature animals to move during daylight because that just does not happen all the time. You know, there's something to it had two incredible encounters this week with two great deer that normally probably would have been happy to shoot, but I was here for a specific animal and I never would have had the opportunity to harvest a 218 inch non-typical if I would have dropped the hammer on either of those bucks. You know, so you've got to stay focused 
and committed, you know, when, when you're chasing an animal this caliber, you know, you're never going to get the opportunity if you shoot a, a, a lesser buck, you know. And I was as laser focused as somebody could be going after this buck this week and um, never going to forget this evening, never for, going to forget shooting the biggest buck of my life within, you know, three minutes of the red moon, just a um, day I'll never forget. Want to experience the same results you just witnessed? Use what the Deer Society experts use. The Extinguisher Deer Call and Black Rack Rattling System are the highest rated deer communication systems of all time. And less than 1% of deer hunters will have the opportunity to buy one this season. Get yours today at thedeersociety.com. Order now.